Robert went on a business trip but returned home a day earlier. He found his wife in the bedroom, reading. Do you think she's lying to him? Yes, Robert's wife is overdressed for a reading night. Also, look, there's someone's foot under the bed. Now your task will be to decide which person of the two is in the wrong. Ready? Here's the first one. Quinn and Eliza can't swim. This summer, they both decided to learn how to do it finally. Quinn went to the river near her house. Eliza went to the lake with her friends. They both jumped into the water alone. Who's in greater danger? Quinn, if she starts drowning, no one will be able to help her. Also, the water in the river isn't steady, so it's dangerous to learn there. Chloe and Everly went to go to a party their classmates are throwing, but it's a school night, so their parents banned them from going. Chloe decided to go out of her bedroom window, and Everly wanted to sneak out from the back door. Who won't make it to the party tonight? Everly, most probably. Chloe is acting quite risky, but she might manage the trip. But Everly's mom is right there around the corner, reading. She'll definitely see her daughter trying to sneak out. Hazley and Annabelle plan to go to the movies with their friends tonight. Meanwhile, they're enjoying a hot summer day. Who is not going to make it to the movies? Hazley. She's about to cook the meat that has been standing in the sun for a while. By the evening, she'll probably get food poisoning. Liberty and Cleo went on vacation to Greece. Now they're about to jump off a cliff. Who's in danger? Liberty. There are rocks under the cliff she's about to jump from. Nova made her daughter stay at home and study instead of going to a friend's birthday party. Allison's daughter had to spend the entire day in her bedroom instead of going to the movies. Teenagers come down to dinner at 7 o'clock. Which parent didn't notice they were being lied to? Nova. It's raining and her daughter has wet hair. It means she was outside and not sitting in her bedroom. Beth and Kylie are having fun outside during their winter break. Beth is learning how to skate on the lake, and Kylie is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Beth, the ice on the lake is cracking and there's no one around to help her. William and Daniel are driving to work and they're both running very late. Who's doing something really wrong? Daniel, he's driving way over the speed limit in the neighborhood. All the money from the city bank was taken in the middle of the day without anybody noticing. The room where it was stored was found completely empty, not counting a signature note saying 7718. The police arrested three most known criminals in the city, Bill, Dove, and Alex. The problem was that they didn't know which one was the robber because they didn't find any fingerprints. What's your call, detective? If you turn the paper around, the numbers will turn into a name. Bill. He must be the robber this time. Right before sunset, a peasant boy was caught by the king's palace. The king was very mad and didn't want to let him go just like that. He loved all kinds of riddles, so he gave the boy a chance to escape. He said that the boy could walk out of any of the three doors, and if he stayed safe, he'd be free. Behind the first door, there was a huge pot with water that was boiled just in the morning. Behind the second door, there were three hungry lions. Behind the third door, there was a raging fire. The boy made his choice and managed to leave. Which door did he walk out of?
He walked out of the first door. If the water was boiled in the morning, by sunset, it would already be barely warm. Mrs. Quinn, a mother of four, went to work. She left a $50 bill on the kitchen table for her oldest daughter, Katie, to go shopping. Later that day, Katie told her that she couldn't find it. Mrs. Quinn told her to look for it, and Katie asked each one of her siblings. Serena texted, The money was there, but I didn't touch it. Hannah texted, I put it under some plates so that it doesn't fly away. Della texted, There was a pile of yesterday's junk mail. I threw it away. Maybe the money was there. Who took the money? It must have been Della. There was no mail when Mrs. Quinn left the bill on the table, so Della is making things up. Aurora and Autumn were spending their summer in the countryside. They loved to go on long walks and explore the surroundings. One day, they found an abandoned hotel and just walked in. Everything there was crushed, and the glass was shattered. They took some photos and were looking through them at home. One of the photos scared them. Which one and why? Probably this one. Look, there's a mirror, and they're not reflected in it. Amelia and Dakota are sisters. Their grandmother gave Amelia a bracelet, but they both loved it. So, Dakota often steals the bracelet from her. Once, Amelia came home and noticed that the bracelet was gone. She knocked on her sister's door. Dakota opened the door but noticed that it was her sister and shut it. A bit later, Amelia broke into the room and started searching for the bracelet, but she didn't find it anywhere. On her way out, she remembered something and managed to find her bracelet. Where was it? Amelia remembered that when Dakota opened the door, she was wearing a t-shirt. The next time, she was already wearing a long sleeve shirt. She put on the bracelet and was hiding it under the sleeve. That's why Amelia didn't find it in the room. Spencer woke up in a dungeon. She didn't know what had happened, but there was a door. Spencer tried to open it, but it was shut. There were three buttons. On one button, there was a circle. On the second one, there was a triangle. On the third one, there was a rectangle. One button will set her free, and the other two will lock the door forever. There was a note saying, one, five, seven, 11. Which button should she press to get out? You might have noticed that there's a clock right above the door, and it's there for a reason. If you draw lines connecting 1, 5, 7, and 11, you will get the shape of a rectangle. So Spencer should press the button with a rectangle on it. Lucas, the heir of a rich gentleman, visited his cousin, Kai, for a cup of tea. They were talking about water polo, when suddenly, Lucas couldn't breathe anymore. Kai called the doctor, who said that Lucas had been poisoned. Both men were drinking the exact same tea. How did Kai manage to poison his cousin? The poison must have been on Lucas's cup. When he touched it with his lips, he probably licked it off. There's a town where it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relum came home after a long and fun day at the club. Her three daughters spent a fun day at home. She asked them what they'd been doing. Hannah said that she was watching TV all day long. Elle said that she spent the day in a water park. Ava said that she and her friends had had a candy-eating marathon. Still, Mrs. Rellin could tell that one of her daughters lied and actually spent all day reading. Who was it? It was Hannah. Take a closer look at the books on her table. Most of them have perfect spines, but this one has a bent spine. So Hannah was reading it. The woman called the police and reported that she'd been robbed. Here's a recording of what she said. I went to the ladies' room to fix my makeup because I was on a date. Suddenly, someone approached me from behind and hit me on the head with something heavy. I blacked out, and it took me several minutes to come. I'm still feeling dizzy. I don't know what the person looked like. I didn't see anything. I was reapplying my lipstick. 
the police refused to fill in the report and sent her home. Why? If the woman was applying her lipstick, she must have been looking in that huge mirror every bathroom has. No one could have approached her from behind without her noticing it. She probably just lied and made up the whole story. An iced tea cafe owner reported that someone had stolen all the money when he had left for two minutes. The police interrogated three customers. Tatum, a teenager, said that she'd been listening to music and minding her own business. Charles, a middle-aged man, said that he'd just arrived a couple of minutes ago and hadn't seen anything. Skylar, a doctor, said that she had been focusing on her book and her drink and had seen nothing. Who's guilty? Charles said that he'd just arrived, but look, the ice in his drink has melted. He definitely has been there for a while, not just a couple of minutes. A wealthy man, Mr. Johnson, had a precious vase that he valued more than all other belongings. One day, the vase disappeared. The man was miserable. An hour after he discovered it was missing, he got a message. If you don't come here in 10 minutes with $100,000, your vase will be broken. There was a photo attached to the message. Mr. Johnson realized it was some hotel. In that area, there were three of them. The Hero of California, Hummingbird, and Youth Hostel. Where should the man go? Mr. Johnson should hurry to Hummingbird. It's the only hotel that has the seventh floor. Amanda was in the middle of a burning room. The only window was small and too high for the woman to reach. There was also nothing to climb or stand on. There was no rope, neither was there a door. And still, in a matter of seconds, Amanda was outside. How is it possible? There was no door in the room. The woman just ran out through the doorway. A woman is sitting in her cabin in Ohio, but four hours later, she gets out of her cabin in Arizona. How did she do it? The woman is a pilot, and the cabin is actually the cockpit of the plane she flies. One night, Kevin broke into a rich house. He knew its owner had just bought a unique diamond. The thief managed to get through one of the trickiest security systems he'd ever seen. And here it was, the diamond. After grabbing the gem, Kevin got out of the house. But when he was already outside the gate, two security guards caught him. The guy tried to persuade the men he was only a passerby, but they didn't believe him. They searched Kevin, but found nothing. The guards were puzzled and decided the thief had swallowed the diamond. But X-Ray also didn't show anything strange. The security guards had to let Kevin go. The guy got home and in a few minutes, he had the diamond in his hands. How did he smuggle it? When Kevin broke into the house, he wasn't alone. His parrot was with him. After getting the precious stone, the guy attached it to the parrot's foot. And the bird brought the diamond back home. Paul was a young but very talented chemist. He was going to attend a very important conference where he had to present his latest work. But right before the event, Paul's envious colleague locked the guy in his lab. There was no way he could get out of there on his own. In the middle of the room, there was a test tube with some bright purple liquid inside. There was also a note. This mixture will blow up in one minute. You've got only one chance to neutralize it with one of these ingredients. If you add the correct one, the reaction will stop. Here's the clue you'll need to figure out the needed ingredient. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. And don't hope your chemical knowledge will help here. Luckily, Paul was very smart and managed to find the right ingredient before the time ran out. Which one was it? It's a row of letters from H to O. It means the needed ingredient is H2O, which is water. Two identical vans were crossing the bridge when it collapsed. The car fell into the water and started to sink. Luckily, the drivers were unharmed. 
but they had to find the way to the surface really fast because the vans started to fill with water. One of the men began to push the driver's door, and the other was trying to open the side door. Who has the higher chances of survival? The first driver won't be able to open the door because of the water pressure. But the side door in the second car is a sliding one. With some effort, the second driver will be able to open it and escape. One person can dig a hole within one day. Then how long will it take two people to dig half a hole? There's no such thing as half a hole. Look at these pictures and try to figure out which mirror is magical. It's the one on the right. It shows the man wearing a mustache, but in real life, his face is clean shaven. Betty was having lunch in her favorite cafe when several police officers came in. They were looking for a criminal who had escaped from the police station the day before. Betty started to look around, examining the visitors. She spotted the criminal even faster than the officers did. Who was it? Look at the barman. He's wearing handcuffs. Daniel wanted to go to the seaside with his friends in the summer, but his father reminded the guy he'd promised to help in his parents' store. When the man saw how upset his son was, he offered him a deal. Daniel had to solve several riddles and then he'd be free to go and have fun with his friends. So, our customers often ask us to sell them something that's full of holes but can still hold water. What should we offer them? After a while, Daniel found the right answer. What's this mysterious thing? It's a sponge. Daniel's father continued, I'm thinking of introducing a new method of pricing the things we sell. Socks will cost $20, a tie will be $12, you'll have to pay $28 for a sweater, and a coat will cost $16. Based on this pricing method, how much will be a t-shirt? Do you know the answer? Daniel was confused at first, but then he realized the correct answer was $24. His father was going to charge $4 for each letter needed to spell the item of clothing. You're doing really well, Daniel's father told the guy. That's why I'll give you just one more riddle. If you crack it, you can have some rest in the summer. 81 times 9 equals 801. This equation isn't correct. What can you do to make it true? This riddle took Daniel quite a while. And how fast can you solve it? All Daniel had to do was turn the equation upside down. Luckily, the guy managed to figure it out. He got 108 equals 6 times 18. Jason was a courier who regularly delivered food and other stuff to Mrs. Brown. The elderly lady really liked him a lot. She trusted him enough to let the guy use her spare key. The lady kept it under her doormat. When Mrs. Brown was away, Jason would take this key and leave everything he brought inside. One day, the guy came to the woman's house and found out the key wasn't in its usual place. He rang the bell, and a man he'd never seen before opened the door. I'm an electrician, he said. I was fixing some lighting problems in the living room, and the elderly lady is resting now. Jason immediately called the police. Why? The criminal entered the house with the help of the spare key. Paul came back from his lunch break and saw that someone had spilled coffee all over his documents. He cried out, and this attracted his boss's attention. The man decided to figure out who had spoiled Paul's work. He asked his subordinates what they had been doing during their lunch break. Nancy and Liza said they had been together. They went to a cafe to get some coffee. Brian explained that he'd felt unwell. That's why he decided to take a walk in the park. And Sandra said that she'd been talking to her boyfriend on the phone.
The boss immediately realized who was lying. Can you figure it out? It was Sandra. There's a sign on the wall that prohibits the employees to use their phones in the office. It means the girl couldn't be speaking with her boyfriend. A wealthy businessman disappeared right from his home one afternoon. His wife called the police. The detective arrived and questioned everyone who was in the house at that time. The cook said that she'd been preparing dinner and hadn't left the kitchen. The maid claimed she had been cleaning the dining room after the businessman and his wife had had lunch. And the wife said that after lunch, she'd been sunbathing and swimming in the pool. The detective immediately realized who was behind the man's disappearance. Do you know the answer? It was the wife. Look outside. It's late fall and there's no water in the swimming pool. Jeffrey was on a plane, ready to have his first parachute jump, when he started to panic. Without putting on his parachute, the guy jumped out of the plane. And still, he remained absolutely unharmed. How is it possible? The plane was still on the ground. There's a large apple tree growing on a cliff. If a powerful wind is blowing towards the land, where will the apples fall? In any case, they will fall down. Mr. Morrison was the owner of a small company. Only four people worked there. One day, he came to the office and didn't find his favorite slippers. He always put them on while working. The man searched everywhere and finally spotted them on the roof of the building. Mr. Morrison was furious. He entered the office and started to question his employees. Daniel said, I don't even know where you keep your slippers. Andrew said, I'm terrified of heights. I have never climbed up there. Sandra said, I'm wearing high heels today. I can hardly walk in them. Emily said, I respect you too much to do it to you. One of the employees is lying. Who is it? It's Andrew. He said he was afraid of heights. But on his table, there's a photo in which he's skydiving with a parachute. Uh Uh-oh. Melissa's boyfriend proposed to her and presented a beautiful diamond ring. The girl was afraid of losing it. That's why she kept it in a box on her vanity table. Once, after a long and difficult working day, the girl came home and went straight to bed. When she woke up, the ring was gone. Melissa called the police. They asked three suspects, Melissa's roommate, her best friend, and her neighbor, what they had been doing the night before. Helen, Melissa's roommate for the last three years, said Melissa had indeed looked very tired. She took the tea Helen made for her and went to her room at 10 p.m. Helen went to bed shortly after. Eric, Melissa's best friend, said he had come to visit Melissa at about 11.30 p.m. The girl was already sleeping, but he saw a jewelry box lying open on the table. It was empty. Eric was surprised and left immediately after that. Brenda, the neighbor, said she wanted to borrow a book from Melissa, but when she called her, the girl didn't answer. So Brenda decided not to bother her so late at night. The police soon realized one of these people was lying. Who was it? It was Eric. He was only asked what he had been doing the evening before, but he mentioned the jewelry box. He must have known the ring was missing because he took it. A group of friends went camping. They found a beautiful place in the forest near the river. They were planning to spend a week there. But on the third day, Chris disappeared. The rest of the group gathered near a campfire to figure out where he could be. Paul said, We didn't have enough firewood. I went deeper into the forest to get some. When I came back, Chris was already gone. Ashley said, I was near the river washing my t-shirt. I stained it with ketchup during lunch. Nancy said, I felt unwell, so I decided to take a nap. I was sleeping when an owl woke me up. One of the young people is lying. Do you know who it is? It's Nancy. Owls sleep during the day. It means an owl couldn't have woken a girl. 
Someone started a gas leak in Mark's apartment. Luckily, the man noticed it. He called the police. After searching the place, they found a watch. Mark claimed it wasn't his. The detective decided to set up an ambush. The watch looked expensive. Surely the criminal would return to get it back. At around midnight, they heard the key turn in the door lock. In a while, a man came in. He was holding a lit candle in his hands. At first, the detective wanted to arrest the man. But after a while, he realized it wasn't the person they had been waiting for. How did he figure it out? Whatever the man was doing in Mark's apartment, he wasn't the one responsible for the gas leak. That criminal wouldn't have entered the apartment holding a burning candle. They would be sure the place was still full of gas. The police found out one particular gang was going to rob a bank. An undercover agent was sent to the restaurant where the criminals always gathered in the evening. His task was to attach a tiny GPS tracker to one of the gang members. Then the police would know about their location and would be able to prevent the robbery. The leader of the gang was the mastermind of the group. All other members were just muscle. The undercover officer had to be very attentive around the leader. The man could easily spot the device. But no other gang member would notice it. Where should the agent place the tracker? On the gang leader's backpack. He's the only person who can spot the device, but not if it's on his own back. Police got a call from the house of a wealthy man. He didn't come home after going for a job. When several police officers arrived, they questioned all the people in the house. They were the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Jones went for a jog, he asked me to prepare his breakfast. I immediately got down to work. But it's been three hours, and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other, and I went to work. The driver told the police he had been waiting for his boss in the car, scrolling through his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? The maid is lying. If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have already turned brown by now. Shirley got a new job as a sales assistant. She was extremely happy to receive her first salary. She went out for a walk in the park and decided to treat herself to some ice cream. She pulled out cash, but a powerful gust of wind has blown the money out of her hands. The girl managed to pick it up. But then she realized one $10 bill was missing. Shirley looked around. One of these people must have taken the bill. Can you figure out who it was? It's the man in the red baseball cap. The bill is under his right foot. Detective Larson was walking along the street. Suddenly, he saw a man grab an elderly woman's bag and run away. The detective immediately rushed after the criminal, but the man disappeared behind the kitchen door of a small restaurant. When Detective Larson entered, he saw three cooks preparing food. Which cook is fake? It's the man holding the salad bowl. He's the only one not wearing gloves. People began to disappear in a large town. One month after it started, the police came across an abandoned house. In its basement, they found two men. Each of them claimed that he had been locked up there and that the other man was the one to keep him in the basement. But it was clear that only one of them was telling the truth. Look at these men attentively and say who's the liar. It's the man who's smiling. If he had spent four weeks locked up, he would have a beard and mustache by now. But he is clean-shaven. Rachel Brown, the owner of a large and successful company, has disappeared right from her office. The police suspect that some of her subordinates might know where the woman is. They question three people. Ruth, the HR manager, is the first to enter. We were going to fire an employee that day. I came to get Miss Brown's signature. Adam, the accountant, says, I indeed came to her office. She had to approve the company's budget for the next year. And the secretary comes in last. 
I saw Ms. Brown today, but only for a minute or so. I asked her to sign my leave request. The police officers immediately realize who is lying. Can you figure it out too? Anne is lying. The signature on her documents is different from the others. Plus, she is the person Ruth was going to fire that day. Martin bought a car in September, and now, just a month later, it's stolen. The police have four suspects, and all of them are Martin's friends. The crime happened at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. At that time, Alan was playing badminton in the park. Natalie was driving home from work. Roy was walking with his dog, and Rose was doing some grocery shopping. Who took Martin's car? It was Alan. At 10 p.m. in October, it's too dark to play badminton. Eric was having lunch in a cafe. At some moment, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. But when he came back, the phone was gone. Eric saw a man leaving the cafe and hurried after him. The guy only caught up with the man when he was about to sit in his car. Eric asked the man to give him his gadget back. But the man looked confused. I know nothing about your phone. I only gave my friends a lift. They work over there. And he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. His car was a sports convertible with just two seats. Such a car wouldn't fit three men. Oh, by the way, you get extra points if you caught the fact that Eric called the police. With what? His smartphone had been stolen. (laughs) On the weekend, Ashley wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing. But her father didn't let her go. So Ashley asked if she could go visit her grandparents instead. They had recently moved to a nice one-story country house. This time, her father happily agreed. But Ashley only used this as an excuse to leave home. In reality, the girl went to the party. When she came back home after the weekend, her father asked her what she had been doing at her grandparents' place. Ashley said she had been mostly studying upstairs. Her father immediately knew she was lying. But he didn't even call his parents to ask if what Ashley said was true. How did he understand? Ashley said she'd spent her days upstairs. But her grandparents lived in a one-story house. I guess Ashley needed to get her story straight. Michael wants to play some games on his brother's computer. The brother usually allows him to do it, but only when Michael manages to break the code. Today, the hint is Ava, 0, Kate, 200, Beth, 500, Olivia, 0, Avery, hmm, what's the passcode? Each consonant in the word gives you 200 points, and each vowel takes away 100 points. In Ava, there's one consonant that gives 200 points. But then, each vowel takes away 100, so it results in zero. In Kate, two consonants make it 400 points, and two vowels take away 200, which leaves us with 200 points. Now you get the pattern. So, following this logic, there are two consonants in Avery. That's 400 points but three valves take away 300 points altogether. It means the password is 100. Esme got lost in the forest, again. She was wandering around all day long. Finally, at dusk, she saw a spooky house where a witch lived. Esme had nowhere else to go, so she entered the house, petted the witch's cat, and asked for help. The witch had a problem of her own. If you manage to solve it, I'll let you go. Look, I have two apples. I want to cut them so all three of us, me, you, and the cat, get the same portion. (laughs) But my magical knife can only make one cut. How can Esme solve this problem? She should put the apples together and make a diagonal cut across them. There'll be four pieces. But the two smaller ones will make the third portion, and it'll be equal in size to the other two. 
An old king had no heirs to the throne, but he needed one, so he asked the smartest young people in the kingdom to gather at the palace. He gave them each an egg. Then he said that whoever took the best care of their egg and could grow a beautiful bird would be the next king or queen. Half a year later, the young people came back with gorgeous birds of different kinds. Only one girl, Scarlet, came back empty-handed. She said she couldn't do it. Surprisingly, the king announced her to be the next queen. Can you explain why? The king gave everybody a simple rock instead of a real egg, which means that no one could possibly grow a bird. Everyone else cheated except for Scarlet. And the king realized she was the only one who would make a good and fair queen. Ariana wanted to have some pocket money, so she started to work at a bookstore. At the end of her first day, she noticed that one book of the collection was missing. There was no record of someone buying it, so it must have been stolen. Ariana was an honest girl. She went to the manager and admitted she hadn't noticed the theft. But the manager just laughed and said that nothing was missing. Take another look at the bookshelf and try to figure out why. The collection only has 8 books. The ninth book is actually book number 6, but it's standing upside down and in the wrong place. Mrs. Miller has 4 daughters, Abby, Beth, Charlie, and Danny. They're identical quadruplets. Once, the woman asked the girl's teacher to let Abby go after the first class. She had an important appointment. The teacher couldn't tell the teenagers apart, and the girls wanted to have some fun. So they gave her a hint. Charlie is somewhere in the middle. Danny is on the left side of Beth and on the right of Abby. Abby is right next to Danny. Can you help the teacher identify all the girls and find out which one is Abby? So we know Charlie is somewhere in the middle, and since Danny has someone on both sides, she's somewhere in the middle too. If Charlie is the second, Danny must be the third, and since Danny is on the left side of Beth, Beth must be the fourth, and Abby the first. But it can't be true, because Abby and Uh Danny are supposed to be next to each other. But if we switch Charlie and Danny, Uh Danny will be right next to Abby, but still on the left side of Beth. It means that the right order is Abby, Danny, Charlie, and Beth. Abby is the first girl. Mrs. Jones' friend called her to say she had just seen one of her sons at a party, but she wasn't sure which one it was. Mrs. Jones never allowed her sons to go to parties. Mm -mm. She asked them if any of them had been there, but the guys denied breaking the rules. Mark said he had been studying. John said he had been practicing for his piano class. And Ethan said he had been playing computer games. Can you figure out who's lying? Ethan. Look, he has a lipstick stain on his collar. A company was hiring a new manager. They wanted full commitment, so they didn't want this person to have a family. Ben and Rob came to the interview. Both of them said they weren't fathers and didn't plan to become ones. Rob had a flawless resume. But the company still hired Ben, even though he wasn't as good as Rob. Why? Before the interview, Ben had to take his teenage daughter to her ballet class. After that, he accidentally brought her pink ballet backpack with him. The HR specialist noticed it and realized Ben had a daughter. In June, all students had their final math exam. The professor looked at them and understood that one of them was going to cheat. Who was it? And how did the man figure it out? It must be this girl. It's June, and everyone is wearing t-shirts and shorts. But she's put on a sweater and high boots. She must be hiding something. George and Carter are cooking dinner for tonight. 
Can you see who is doing something wrong? It's Carter. Look, he's using rat poison as a salad dressing instead of oil by accident. I think I'll skip the salad tonight. Liam and Owen were camping in a forest. Suddenly, they saw a bear near their tent. Liam decided to run away, and Owen froze and stood still. Who is in danger? Liam, the bear is likely to start chasing him, and the animal will definitely be faster. If you ever find yourself in such a situation, it's better to keep your cool. Slowly move backward, keeping eye contact. Michelle and Emma were enjoying their time outside when a storm started. Michelle hid in her car that was in the middle of the beach, and Emma just kept swimming away from the shore. Who is not smart? Emma. She should get out of the water immediately and join Michelle in the car. It's dangerous to touch water during a thunderstorm. Two friends, Tom and James, went swimming after school. They found a nice spot and decided to jump from a cliff. Can you tell who's in danger? Tom. He should have examined the bottom more thoroughly. There are rocks under the cliff he chose to jump from. Oh boy. Camilla and Rachel were cleaning the house. At some point, both women entered their teenage children's bedrooms. Camilla noticed her son's phone and decided to check it. And Rachel found her daughter's diary and opened it. Who is in trouble? Both mothers aren't doing that great, checking other people's personal things. But Camilla is about to get busted. Her son is about to walk into the room. Elizabeth and Mackenzie are both late for work. They're driving over the speed limit. Who isn't smart? Elizabeth. Too many random things are lying around in her car. In case of an accident, they may hit her. Two guys, Mike and David, came to the prom looking gorgeous. But one of them isn't as rich as he wants to seem. Can you tell who it is? Look at Mike's shoes. They're all dirty. He must have been walking to the prom because he couldn't afford a car. But I'll bet his girlfriend loves him for the great guy he is, not how much money is in his pocket. Megan and Jennifer are the most popular girls at school, but one of them is poorer than the other. Can you tell who it is? It's Megan. Look at her purse. It looks like Gucci, but the logo is wrong. It must be a cheap copy of the bag. But Megan saved a lot of money, so maybe she is the smartest. Two families are going on vacation. Look at them attentively and try to figure out which family spends more money. The family on the left. Their bags have stickers on them showing they travel regularly. Or maybe the family on the right just prefers collecting fridge mags over stickers. Mr. and Mrs. Luce have seven daughters. Each daughter has one brother. Can you tell how many people there are in the family? The correct answer is 10. Mr. Luce, Mrs. Luce, seven daughters, and one brother. Dr. Luce is a world-famous chemist. He has just arrived in London to attend an international science seminar. The next morning, the lab cleaner found Dr. Luce unconscious on the floor. One of the six lab assistants poisoned the chemist. The names of the six assistants are Austin, William, Oscar, Leo, DJ, and Robert. To solve this case, lab managers called the local detective. 
Mr. Smith. Hmm. Dr. Luce left this mysterious note on the table. Here's what he wrote. 76, 20, 44, 79, 16, 22, 7. After reading the note, Mr. Smith asked the police to arrest two criminals. Who are the criminals? Oscar and Dustin. Remember that Dr. Luce is a chemist? He encrypted the names of his enemies using the periodic table hanging on the wall. Dr. Luce got better and returned to his work in the lab. He invited a young scientist, Oscar, for a job interview. His resume was too good to be true, so Dr. Luce decided to check Oscar's logical thinking. He offered Oscar to solve this number puzzle. Oscar cracked this task right away. What about you? Here's a little hint. You should read this puzzle from left to right and from top to bottom. Question 1. What are the next two rows of numbers? And question 2. Why? Here's the correct answer. Line 3 represents two ones. Line 4 then becomes one, two, and one, one. Line 5, therefore, is 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2 ones. Using the same logic, we can now decode line 6, 3 ones, 2 twos, and 1 1. Line 7 is 1 3, 1 1, 2 twos, and 2 ones. Dr. Luce hired Oscar and took him to the basement of the lab, but someone has changed the password on the door. Can you help the guys guess the code? This rebus is a hint. The correct password is summary. Dr. Luce offered one more riddle to his new employee. How can a man go eight days without sleep? Can you help Oscar crack this one? The correct answer is easily because people sleep at night. In the basement, Dr. Luce found out that someone had stolen his latest innovation, a superhero costume. He had questioned three suspects. Jack, the cleaner, said, I've been cleaning the floor in the hallway all morning. I haven't entered your office yet. Hmm. Peter, the lab assistant, said, I was working on my own project, and besides, I don't have a key to your private office. Hmm. And Dr. Luce's wife, Helen, said, You never tell me anything about your work. How would I know what to steal? Hmm. Dr. Luce took fingerprints from the closet where the costume was. But he found only his own fingerprints. Who stole the costume? It was Helen. She's the only one who's wearing gloves. Oh. After a short interrogation, Helen confessed that she had sold the costume to Dr. Luce's major enemy, Dr. Phillips. Dr. Luce went to his lab to take his invention back. A creepy guard stopped Dr. Luce at the entrance and asked for a password. Can you help Dr. Luce find out the code? See the sign on the wall? You should rearrange these letters to spell just a single word. So, the correct password is a single word. Dr. Luce entered the building and found himself in a strange place guarded by two people. One of the guards always says the truth, while the other one always lies. Dr. Luce doesn't know who is who. He can only ask one question to escape. What should he ask? If he asks the guard who always tells the truth, he would tell that the other guard would point to the dangerous door. And if he asks the guard who always lies, he would tell the opposite door of the truth-telling guard and point to the dangerous door. In either case, both guards will point to the dangerous door, and then Dr. Luce should just choose the other door. Dr. Luce entered the room and saw this group of scientists. Can you spot anything weird in this picture?
the scientists are holding four slices of pizza in their hands, but only three pieces are missing from the pizza box. Hmm. Dr. Luce entered Dr. Phillips' office. The room was empty. Can you help him find anything suspicious? Someone is hiding in the ceiling vent. Suddenly, Dr. Luce saw Dr. Phillips flying around in the superhero costume. He grabbed Dr. Luce, took him to the top of a mountain, and left him there alone. Dr. Luce wandered around and found three tunnels. There's an angry, hungry lion in the first tunnel. There's a huge fire in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel leads through a dinosaur lair. Which way should Dr. Luce choose? The third one. Dinosaurs became extinct millions of years ago. Dr. Luce came to a village and asked the local farmer, Rick, for a glass of water. Rick told him that he'd been struggling to divide his entire land between his two sons. Both of the sons have been very good to him. And now, Rick's only wish is to treat his sons fairly and divide his land equally between them. But the problem is that the land has a weird shape. And thus, there's no way to split it into two equal halves. Dr. Lou said, I have an idea. It can guarantee that the land will be divided in a matter that will satisfy both sons. Can you guess what's on his mind? All Rick needs to do is ask one of his sons to divide the land into two parts and tell him that the other son will have the choice of selecting one of those two halves. In this manner, both of them will avoid any tricks and divide the land equally. Dr. Luce was sitting at the local restaurant. He was sad because he'd lost his wallet during his adventures. He noticed a man next to him pulling a wad of $100 notes out of his pocket. Dr. Luce turned to the rich guy and said, Hey, I have an amazing talent. I know almost every song that has ever existed. The rich guy laughed. Dr. Luce then said, I'm willing to bet you all the money you have in your wallet that I can sing a genuine song with a lady's name of your choice in it. The rich man laughed again and said, Okay, how about my wife's name, Helga Fiona Mary Rose Holmes? This evening, the rich man went home poor, and Dr. Luce went home rich. What song did he sing? The Happy Birthday Song The villagers told Dr. Luce mystical legends about the local forest. He liked creepy stories and decided to go there and see it for himself. He set off at night and soon got to the forest. He noticed a small shop nearby. The seller said, Hey bro, don't go to this forest unequipped. Take this magic potion. It will make any creepy monster fall asleep for 10 hours. Dr. Luce took one bottle and continued the journey. He wandered there for several hours, but he didn't see anything mysterious. Dr. Luce was about to leave right before dawn. Someone appeared in front of him. A pair of vampires that feed on humans and a siren who hunts people using her singing. So there are three enemies, but Dr. Luce has only one potion. What should he do? The sun will rise in a few seconds, and vampires will run away. That's why he should pour the potion at the siren. Dr. Luce found an abandoned castle. As soon as he entered, someone locked the door. Dr. Luce found three ways out, but all of them were dangerous. The first path was full of hungry wolves. It was impossible to get through. The second passage was guarded by five vacuum cleaner robots that were reprogrammed to hunt down humans. And the third passage was filled with molten lava. What door should he choose? The second one. The vacuum cleaners might go after him, but they're pretty harmless. Finally, Dr. Luce returned to his hometown. He's also a college teacher. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough time to prepare for the upcoming class. Oh. Therefore, he offered the students this tricky lesson. There was no homework, assignments, or tests, but there was a final test that would have only one question on it. When everyone received the test, it was a blank sheet of paper with a question on it. What is risk? 
Most students managed to give their answers, but only one student deserved the highest grade. Yes! That's weird because he only wrote down one word. What did he write? His reply was this. Dr. Luce went on a business trip to Vienna. He felt very nervous because he was about to meet a lady he used to date in college, Jane. She's also a scientist who's currently working on immortality pills. That's why she asked Dr. Luce to come over and help her. As soon as he entered her office, he knew that something had gone wrong. Three zombies were standing in the room. Can you tell which one is his ex-girlfriend? Take a look at Dr. Luce's hand. He has a tattoo, T plus J. So his girlfriend is the second zombie because she has a tag on her foot that says Jane. 